This conference uh, was an idea that germinated a few months ago uh, because we're in an era where we face what people are commonly referring to as the new normal. Now, what is the new normal? Well, basically it comes with unprecedented uncertainty at industry and at system levels, macroeconomically as well. And firms have to contend with how to organize, how to innovate in potentially different ways than what they've been used to uh, as they find that this becomes a more common mode and not just a temporary aberration from the ways that they were doing business earlier. The Max Center's mission is really to enable firms to perform innovation of products and services in a more effective and more efficient way. So what we thought is that if conditions are changing, then it's very important to give industry and have the impact on industry uh, a new approach for thinking about this, right? And we can't claim in a one-day conference to really solve all of industry's problems, but if the Max Center can be thought of as an interface between academia and industry, then I think we, uh, in order to achieve our mission, we need to have some impact on practice. And so if you really think about all the changes that are taking place in the last few years following the financial crisis, leading into the European debt crisis, and now a little bit of the slowdown and changes in countries like China and India, uh, it's time for us to address some of the needs of industry and bring our academic insights to bear on the problems. Current decision makers really need to think about a number of factors in approaching the new normal or specifically organizing in the new normal. One is it is a new normal. It sounds very obvious, but this type of situation that we're in is probably here to stay for some time. And what is exactly the new normal? I mean, we can think of it as characterized by unprecedented uncertainty, which I mentioned, um, but along more dimensions than we saw before. So specifically, earlier we were much more concerned about how do technologies evolve, markets evolve, and now we have on top of that the globalization and integration of markets, not only product markets, but also labor markets, as well as financial markets, that brings advantages, but also poses some challenges and creates the potential for ripple effects if uh, there are conditions which are not favorable. On top of that, like we've seen in the last few years, beyond just the industry level uncertainty, we have these periodic system level shocks at the macroeconomic level. And so if we think about it from that perspective, it really means that we need to rethink how organizations are organized in order to address this magnified and perhaps more powerful uncertainty so that firms are able to continually adjust, come up with good products and services amidst these conditions. Now, one thing I would like to say is that we think of the new normal and oftentimes people see it as a negative. But actually, it's not just navigating the new challenges, but it brings the opportunities of new kinds of products and services that we can bring to bear. And of course, new ways of innovation. And I think that's where the exciting piece is. And as the Mac Center, we definitely need to look at those kinds of problems because there's a, they're at the forefront and at the cutting edge. There are a number of organizations that have uh, tackled this better than others, and I think that's always uh, the case. Uh, fundamentally, I think the firms that have realized they need to reorganize are in a, in a better position. Now, why might firms need to reorganize when we think about the new or nor normal? Why do we have to potentially think about a, even a new architecture? Because it might require new business models new capabilities, as well as new architectures, processes, and organizational structures, both formal structures as well as informal structures. A couple of factors that we need to think about are that we can no longer do all the innovation in-house. I assert that because, if you think about it, with so many changes going on, technologically, market-wise, in terms of globalization, as well as these macroeconomic potential shocks, we have constrained resources in almost every firm. I don't know any firm which doesn't have that. So it's about making the best use of your resources. On top of that, we have to think about how can we be efficient 
as well as effective in what we do in the creation and the delivery of new products and services. And so that leads us to not just thinking about reconfiguration internally, but also tapping into external modes, such as thinking about outsourcing, about ecosystems, which are all equally attractive, but really has implications. Because then we have to think about all of a sudden, well, how do we think about value creation and value appropriation across the boundaries of the firm? It's already hard enough internally. How do we do that externally? In addition, we have to think about organizational forms potentially changing. And then finally, what does it mean to be core or peripheral? So if we accumulate all of these thoughts, what we see emerging perhaps precipitated by the new normal, but it's really a, a movement which started earlier, is the evolution of global firms that are disaggregated, distributed, in order to, in the most efficient and effective way, leverage resources and capabilities in real time across the world, whether from internal teams or from external partners. So who are the firms that have done this particularly well? Well, uh, for example, IBM is a company that has mastered this. They really have built up multiple centers of excellence across the world, making them have a pool of capabilities that can really address multiple types of market uh, demand technological conditions and help them navigate all these different possible constellations of what the world on a micro or macro level might look like. Another firm is Cisco, for instance, because they have also declared that they want to put leadership in key places around the world. They call them the globalization centers, and that's up to the top management. Very, very creative. But it's also firms like GE, for instance, or Siemens, who in their medical divisions do innovation locally, leveraging the local conditions, such as emerging markets serving the purpose of innovation of say portable EKG machines or ultrasound machines, but not only for the local market, for the global market. It's just the best possible place for doing that innovation. So we're starting to see that and uh, ecosystem-based competition is of course common where we have standards that are emerging as well. And so we're starting to see this kind of development, but I really see this and I wanna stress this as an evolution that's in progress. It's almost an experiment that we get to see unfold before us and it's precipitated and perhaps um, amplified by the new normal um, and uh, the confluence of a number of different factors and the unprecedented uncertainty. I personally am excited by it because it also brings new opportunities. It's not just about navigating the challenges and uh, we'll see new ways of innovating coming out of it and uh, some things will work, some things won't and uh, we'll get to see the results uh, after some time.